Hi, this is Sally Wood for Be Inspired and today I'm going to be showing you how to change out the back of a chair and my friend had chosen a velvet to put on which unfortunately is dress weight so that has come with its own little set of problems. It's not as sturdy as an upholstery weight so I will explain that as I go along. I use my tack remover. I'm going to ease up all of these. I also like to do this in sections because I get bored. I'll take these out and I tend to clear up as I go along. Years of looking after children. Although I'm putting all of these into a bag, I'm going to sift through and keep the straightest ones. Ease up the staples. Here again, a little section at a time. Use a pair of pliers and pull the staples out. And then you have this little section here to also remove. Put the tack remover behind, or in this case, in front of the staple. Do a couple of taps. Then adjust your tack remover or flathead screwdriver as you go and you will, with a bit of luck, be able to pull your staple up like that. Just take your time, make sure you get everything out. Here again, take all the staples out so it's nice and clean. Everything's out. Now I'm going to work on the next part. Again, just double check that you've got all of the staples out because they do break especially some of the cheaper staples or older staples they'll just snap there's one that hasn't come out if you can pull it out and if not if they're too short then bang them into the chair frame that'll be fine you just don't want to be able to tear your fingers on these or the fabric it's not very good if you tear somebody's fabric up or your own i had one tack the top came off but the nail is still in there so i'm just going to use my hammer and roll it. Now sometimes there's no head there to grab hold of so you have to use your pliers. Now I'll just carry on going round. Along the bottom you can see there's staples here. Very carefully, this is leather so it will mark. I'm going to remove these just like along the sides. Here again, just twist and pull. Just be very careful you don't scratch the leather to get these out. You can get leather fixed. There's a company that does it. I'm not sure what their prices are. On this chair, which I've not ever come across before, and I've been doing this a long time, is a piece of fabric on the inside of the arm. And because this is a heavier weight fabric, I'm gonna have to remove this as well. It's a little bit awkward to get to. I'm sure what they did was they put it in and then put the foam on. It's only got three or four staples, so it doesn't take too long. Remove the staples as before. Now I'll do the other side and the chair's ripped out. This is the velvet she chose. The reason it's dressmaking is it's got these gold lines down it. That's always, as far as I know, denotes that it's dressmaking. The other thing is it's very difficult to see which way the fabric pile lays. It lays one way or another. Sometimes if you hold the fabrics like this you will see it goes dark or light which on this one it doesn't do very well that way and it certainly doesn't do it if I put the two selvages together and do it it's really not that obvious either. The other way to work out a pile is if you roll it onto your finger like that and look down, you can sometimes tell that the pile goes one way or another. And if I look down, I think it goes this way, but it could go that way, I think it's that way. So if that's the case, that's down and that's up. Having decided that that's down, I'm gonna put a little nick on the top here. From now on, the bottom of the V shows down. Now this was the inside back of the chair. That comes to just under 33. I need it to go a little bit further over the top and under the bottom. So I'm going to actually cut that 35 inches. Hold that there, put that along to here. I'm going to make the first cut here. The width of this on here is 26, but I'm going to make it 30. So here again, I'm going to hold on to that there and cut. Actually, I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it 32. So that's the top marked out. The outside back is this one. It should be slightly shorter. And here again, I'm going to make it longer than it was here. So if I'm aperture here to here, it comes to 28 and a half. I'm actually going to make it 31 inches. From my mark, there's my original mark, that there to 31. Measure down, and there's my 30. Now all I'm going to do is fold this, and I'm going to just cut across like this. And before I go too far, I'm going to just mark the down from here. So I know now that this is the top, this here denotes the top of the second piece. And I'm also going to measure across from here as I go. So that 
works out as about 13 and a half inches. So I'm going to just cut down here 13 and a half inches. You could just go all the way across the fabric, but the reason I'm going to cut it like this is that I want to use long lengths for the piping, which means I don't have to join the piping like you would do normally. That is going to go down all the way. I have eight chairs, so I'm just going to use up all the fabric that I've got. This will just go all the way down one side of the fabric. The thing is with velvet it bruises so try not to bruise your fabric. Going back to the outside back and cutting across and refold this like that. So I'm going to reshake it out now. This is all I have to cut is across here. Hold that down and cut along that edge because I've made it extra long it won't matter if it's a little bit wonky will get strained out. The biggest piece is the outside back and then the shorter piece which I also marked and here I'm going to just cut all the way across again. I know this is a smaller piece but I'm going to show you how I cut for the piping. I cut one and a half inches down the whole length of the fabric. I don't include the salvage, it's one and a half inches from the salvage. The other thing I do is at the top having determined which way's up and down for the pile I also make a mark and at the top of that one to mark which way goes down i've also done that with the front of the fabric there's my mark for the top i'm going to mark this top center like this same as i've just done a little nick and i'm also going to mark the center bottom this is important because you want the fabric to be equal going up and down. Before I put the inside back on, there's two things I'm going to have to do. But the first, or the second, depending on which way you get to everything, you need to measure the width of the chair, which is just shy of 18 inches. That would be, in this case, an eighth under nine inches. And then, again, at the widest point from side to side, measure across, which is 23 inches, and mark that. And then with my ruler I'm going to line up the bottom and the top mark and just draw a line it doesn't have to be that long I said there was a couple of things that I had to do before putting the inside back on and the second or the first is cut two inch lengths of dacron or polyester wrap with my first length I'm going to just tuck that under the arm there and staple not too close to the top I want to be able to fold it back and just up from the bottom then I'm going to line up the bottom of this back across here and cut that. I'm going to do the same up here. Before I do that, I'm going to just kind of pull this original dacron or wadding forward. I don't want that in the way. When I pull everything back, it's going to come over the top and it'll smooth anything out if there's a ridge there. And again, a little ways up from the bottom. Don't pull it tight. And at the top here, pull all of this forward if you can. Let it follow the outline of the chair. Don't bring it back too far. Try to have it level with the back and over the front because that will smooth down. And again, do not pull it. Just let it roll. Follow it over the top. Finish up here. On the outside arm, got my mark telling me which way is up and down. Fold it over slightly. Press it up against the back of the chair arm and staple at the bottom and at the top. Pull out to the back and I usually do three times and I go crossways. I've managed to roll this foam back and catch it and then with the fabric, this is the right side, I'm now going to put it with the back side towards the back of the chair. So I'm going to make sure that it's more or less even. I'll do the same on the other side. Now the reason being is when this comes back, it will force everything into the corner and then that will wrap around as I put the side in. Now the good side of the fabric's facing out. With the top, which is marked here, showing which way the pile goes and the center marked there, place it loosely over the top like that. Here's my center mark, which I'm going to pop here on this center line. I'm just going to staple that in. At the bottom, I'm also going to shove this through and find my centre mark here, which I'm going to pull up over the centre mark at the bottom. I'm not going to put the staples in very far, so I'm just going to hold it a little way away and aim it in. And then the same either side, I'm just going to keep it relatively level like this. I'm going to be taking those out. I'm not sure if you can see this, but I'm going to just level these lines and I'm not going to pull, just secure. And here again, I'm going to hold the stapler away and shoot it 
in. On this side, I'm doing exactly the same. So I'm gonna just alter the height if necessary. Shouldn't be too much. And that's almost level two. So I'm gonna secure that. Any line should be almost level here. That's very important, otherwise you're gonna twist the fabric. I've wrapped the side round at the bottom. I'm cut in just a little way. And then on up, maybe an inch to two inches. So two to four centimeters out from the side, all the way to the top. The other thing I'm going to do is like in dressmaking, I'm just gonna clip along here, not too close. If I loosely hold it there over the top, you can see it's not too close at all. And the same going along the back here. I'm going to just slightly pull this fabric round which might mean I have to change that. So I'm going to pull this here and down and staple it. And I'm stapling a good inch down from the top. And I'm not pulling too hard because I don't want the fabric to twist. And push that back onto there like that because that was pulling the wrong way. The front wadding, you need to roll that over the top of the new stuff you put in. So pulling that down. And I'm pulling out also to this far side. And just make sure it looks smooth as you're bringing it in. I'm pulling here down and here across. The lady doesn't want it too sharp like it originally was. Make sure there's no wrinkles along the top. And I do have a wrinkle here, but I think when that's all pulled out, it will hide it. I haven't finished up here. I'm just pulling the side around like that. I'm going to hold it with my fingers. I'm going to staple it sideways about an inch in from the side here. I'm going to do the same again, next little area up. I'm pulling up and in, and then again up and in, and smoothing the side as I go along like that. As you can see, as I'm working up, there are wrinkles. Just remember that I will be pulling all of this down shortly. In the meantime, fold it round and pull it up. The clips at the back will help the fabric open up. Also pull up tight there. Up, back and round. It's easy, you just gotta take your time. The wrinkles are slowly coming out. I'm not being too worried about any ripples because it's a long length, it should straighten itself out anyway. As I come to this corner, I'm still bringing the fabric up. Here's my corner here, work up into there. I'm gonna pull over, you'll see that there's a little bit of a ridge there, that's okay because that's gonna be hidden. I'm going to pull that in here. Then I'm going to pull it down. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a pleat on the back side. Pull it in tight. All my staples I'm pulling back here about a good inch from the top. I don't want a cluster of staples right on the edge because if I have that, then when I put the siding and the piping on, it won't fit. I'm going to trim some of this back again, clip in there again, because I took those off. Pull a second pleat in so it starts coming round. Now I'm going to work this in. I don't know whether you can see, but there's a ridge there, ridge there, ridge there. I don't want those in there. So I'm going to pull here. That straightens this part out. I'm pulling out here, but down. It's a bit awkward to explain. But now I've got ridges here. Don't know whether you can see that in the camera, which I want to get rid of. So I'm gonna pull this back so it's tight and that down on top. If I do that, there's a cluster of pleats here, which most of it's gonna be hidden, nice and tight. All the ridges here have been taken out and it smooths the side out. I'm gonna pull slightly down again here. You can see how it's all come in here. These have opened up slightly. That's why I use this method. As I did on the other side, I'm just going to pull that out slightly and then cut and then along the top like that. And again, snip a little bit along the top here. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to pull it this way, which seems to have smoothed out that little ripple. I've actually put holes in there and that's another reason why you want to put the staples further in than you would do normally. Pull that down here to the center. Pull here. So I'm pulling out and down and around the top so it smooths out. There's a wrinkle here I'm going to just pull in. I need to lengthen these ones. Just wee tad. I'm pulling it to this corner but in and down and around. It's a lot to remember. Here we go. I'm pulling it into this corner here and here and again there to take the wrinkles out here. On this side I'm just going to pull it round. A little cut there. Not too far in. And then again I'm going to just pull the fabric around to the back and secure it. 
going to move and work the fabric in and out like I did on the other side. Stretching and pulling. Remember to put the staples in sideways and work it to the top. Sometimes you need to just pull down on the bottom side and smooth it both ways, but it should go in pretty neatly. It's important to push the fabric up from the front, not just up at the side. Every time you push it, smooth it, it readjusts against the foam. At the top, I will do what I did before, which was to just pull on round as tight as I can and then start pleating at that high point. The first pleat came in a little bit lower than it did on the other side and the subsequent pleats are slightly different as well. Just need to pull that down there into the back. I'm going to trim this back so it's easier to deal with. Now I'm pulling here, I can see that it's wrinkling, so that actually all has to come back out and be replaced. I can't have that. As with the other corner, pull it one way and then back. This is most of course pulling everything back in. So I've got lots of little pleats up there. Now I'm going to just pull this down so I can smooth it out. Once I've pulled the bottom in, it will be perfect. Undo the bottom. Try to get it so it's even on either side. If you need to, you can fold it up just to double check that that's where you want your corners to be and just let it fall back down. The whole idea is not to cut into the edge here, but to cut about a quarter of an inch away. I'm going to carefully push my fingers in like that so that I can see where my fingers are and then I'm going to cut on the back side of my fingers. You don't want to cut too far down because when you pull it underneath you need fabric there too. Straighten that part out and push it forwards. That's the little vanity thing that they had on this chair and then I'm just going to cut here. It's above by a good quarter inch. I'm going to cut from here into the corner of the chair here where the arm folds. I'm not pulling the fabric this way. If I do that, then it's going to be wrong that way. What I do do is pull it down so that I can see where that might go into. And I very carefully nick little bits until I get it exactly where I want it. The first tr dry try is fold it up so that the top of the arm is flat and then push that in with my fingers and see how tight I can get it. Now if I can get it quite tight without too many wrinkles here you're going to get wrinkles. This is not an upholstery fabric so it's not very strong so you don't want to be cutting in and then ripping. I think I can go a little bit closer but I'm going to go as a little V up just a couple of threads up. Let's try it again. Pop that under there, pop that up under there, and pull it in. Now what I'm doing here, the reason I didn't attach this further down is I'm folding that up under there so there's a little bit of bulk, and pull it back. Keep everything tight, and if you need to alter any of these later so that it is smooth on the back here and not wrinkled, then you can. Keep that down tight, I think that will work. This, having been folded underneath like I showed you, and pulled around, staple it here. Looks like I'm going to have to remove this one and just pull it in a little bit tighter there. Flip this one out and not too much because you don't want to put too many wrinkles in. Here's the piece I need to fold into fabric here so I'm going to just pop that back under there so it's nice and smooth without pulling it this way. If you need to just pop that under there to hold it. I'm now going to cut down to the bottom of the arm here or as close to. I'm going to put my finger there so I don't go over. And here again, don't go all the way. If you go all the way and you have cut too far, then you're going to have problems. Fold that under there and then this under here. I think that's going to work. Yes, this is a bit long, so I'm just going to cut that back just a little bit. So I'm not taking that much off, really. Just make it straight. I'm going to fold that over like that so it goes all the way down, tuck that behind there. Don't want to pull it too far from the front. So I'm going to just put that in here, the front down so it fits. If you can, let the ridges or the lines on your fabric tell you where to go. Pull it tight, looks like it's going to have a little ripple there, which is not so good. So I'm going to take a little bit more off, but only a very little. Do not take chunks off. Fold that back down and pull it into place. 
pull that down, pull that up, put it all back. There's a little bit of a ripple, but I think that'll be okay. Make sure that's flat. There we go. So pull it round to secure on the back side. I'm just going to run my finger down and push the fabric behind the arm. Then staple it behind. My line for the centre back is here and my clip out is here. Pull that back into place, pull it quite tight and secure. Work out from the centre, just pull up and into place on either side. As with the top, make some clips in. This has a slightly serpentine edge, so it's going to pull out just a little bit. I'll do that both sides. I only need three or four. And while I'm at it, I'm going to just trim this back. It doesn't have to be that wide. Having secured some of the back, I'm going to just pull towards the upright the chair and find out where this corner is. So here's the inside corner. I'm going to cut from here into that corner. It might not go in very straight. That's okay, because we've got fabric that we're gonna be folding up. We just need to angle it better. Try not to cut anything else. The other thing you need to do is every now and again, take it all apart like that, then fold one back under towards the back of the chair and one under towards the side and see how well that looks. If it wrinkles, then you're going to have to cut it a little bit closer. And I think I'm going to have to cut it a little bit closer. Not by very much. I've got to cut it about half an inch, about a centimetre. You want it to look as smooth as possible. At the front, I'm going to fold up and under. It should go under the padding that's there. If not, don't worry. I'm going to just fold the fabric back. Trim some of this off because it doesn't need to be there. Not too close. Fold that under against the chair leg here and pull it up. I'm going to secure that. Pull that straight up as tight as you can. And as you see, these open up. On this side at the bottom, we're going to just pull it round and out. Now there's a little bit of a wrinkle. Sometimes that happens. Don't worry too much. Because it's under the arm, nobody's really going to see it. Pull it down and across until you get near the bottom and make sure you come a good inch in here's the bottom that i need it to cover so i'm going to cut about an inch down from there straight across and onto the front if need be pull it out and pop it underneath like that and i'm just going to push that up and under like that because you need all of that up out of the way as you pull it it should stay hidden i'm using this old chopstick just to make sure all of that's under there like that so it's hidden it's always handy to have something that you can use then i'm just going to pull it down and round hopefully get most of that pleating out if there's a little bit here don't worry as i say it's dress weight so it's not going to be as thick as normal upholstery weight and then secure it so it's flat along the bottom then repeat on the other side. Pull that out as far as I can. Find the upright and I'm going to cut from here into where my finger is. Basically there. Pull that down as hard as I can. Aim blindly but with confidence and also pull it this way. If you just pull straight down you end up with pleats so you do actually need to kind of pull the fabric out to the side. Here again like I showed you on the other side fold your fabrics under. One goes on the inside of the chair leg the chair back and the other one goes up and under and if you think that's where you need it then staple it in place take your time on this if you mess up you'll have gaps which show the stuffing and that's not what you want to be showing everybody some of it is taken out when you do fold the fabric i've secured that here i noticed earlier there was wrinkling at the top so i'm going to pull this really hard in at the bottom because i have done that i've opened these a little bit further i'm going to put another one in here taking it a little bit further into the serpentine just pull that hard up and mind your fingers i'm going to trim those back i haven't made sure that the fabric's behind here and then it's all pulled in tight here. The sides, I know I said pull back, but you also need to remember to kind of pull down as well because this helps all of this to stay in line. Here again, I need to take some of this off, fold it back underneath. Just make sure it's level with the back. It might crease a little bit, but it should. most of those should come out. Now I'm gonna put the pipe in along the back here, but before I do, I'm gonna cut off about an inch. Having done that, my thumb's at the bottom to indicate where the bottom of the piping is. And I'm going to just run my finger along the side of the wood and the side of the piping so it's, it's next to each other. And I'm going to put a staple here to hold it. Now I'm putting the staple sideways because I don't want too many staples going up. 
I'm going to be putting metal along there. I don't need to put the staples too close together, so I'm going to put my fingers here and put another one here. Now, as I work my way up, the chair starts flaring out. So, as I did with the side of here, I'm just going to put some snips in like this, not across my stitching, just up to the stitching. And I'm actually going to go a little bit further as I've got a lot of shaping to do. Right, so here's my staple here. I'm going to just pull the piping up to about here. As the piping follows the edge of the chair, the fabric will start opening up and flaring out. Next one I'm going to do is up in the corner here. The corner actually goes up and then down. I'm not going to do the up and then down because the aluminium back tacking I'm going to put on won't do that. So I'm going to put the corner in and I'm going to go across ways. I'm going to bring this down to the lowest point where the wood back is. You'll notice that the chair goes up a little bit further and that's okay. Put another one here. I'm going to come up to here, but I'm not going to put a sharp twist in because the aluminium won't do that. So I'm going to just bring it up a little way like that, a little bit higher than the bottom of this dip here. And here's the bottom of this dip. And I'm going to just take it up to the high point, the apex here. I've got to cut some more notches in. I've put in my staple here, brought it round so I can fill the top of the wood here for this one. The rise like I did on this side, down again and then into the corner. I'm going to try to make the corner a little bit sharp so I'm going to do it that way so it comes to the edge as I didn't over here. I'm not going to bring it all the way up. That should do here. Bring it down equal to the other side following the way the chair goes. At the bottom here I'm just going to pop it behind the arm of the chair and then when you come to the bottom of the fabric coming around the leg of the chair I'm just going to extend it down and cut about an inch further down. Peel it back like I did at the beginning, snip back the stitches, cut this about a sixteenth to an eighth up from the bottom but I will staple it about an inch above there. I'm going to try to get this not right into the corner because this has to fold over and push into there. So it's close to hook one of the arms into the hole there and then across. The best size to use for this is actually half inch. I personally like to try to get them in every hole. And mainly because if one tips back like that, it's still grabbed in. If there's too many that do that, then I will actually remove them and start again. I'm going to start pulling up so this follows the piping. Pop that in like that. And then I allow it to undulate following the piping cord. All the way up to the top, pop the one in here and then I'll alter this to the shape I want it to be in. Now I'm going to come round into the side. Where I have to cut it, which is between these here, means I'm going to cut it shy on this particular side. Sometimes it works out better than the others. And um, because it's aluminium, you can actually cut it with a pair of shears, a pair of scissors. I'm just going to finish this up. Now having pushed these in, so they're almost touching the piping cord, I've attached the first one as high as I can. And then following the shape of the chair back, I'm going to staple the aluminium back tacking into place. And I usually start a little ways down and go back up. I managed to get this one quite high up. I'm just going to butt this one as close as I can to it. And here again, like on the other side, allow it to follow the shape of the chair. Now, some people only put them in every other one. I, as I say, I always put them in every one to make sure it's secure. And you can push the metal to any shape you want. Work your way down again. Now, with this side, like I did on the other side, I'm going to finish it about an inch to an inch and a half above the bottom here. Because this is dress weight it's not very thick so I've actually cut a piece of cotton that should fit to go on there at the same time. I marked the top of the fabric to show that this was the top of the pile and the pile went down so the sheen on the fabric front and back should run equally. I'm going to hold these two together and this is when you could do with three hands. Rest it over the top evenly then very carefully with a needle or a regulator 
if you've got one. I've got a long needle here. I'm just gonna pop the top of that in behind the piping and around the metal. I'm gonna just pop it in here, holding that out so it's horizontal, and this won't hold very well. Pop it in the same here. Pinch it closed a little bit to hold it. Not all the way up. The same on the other side. Make sure that that's even with the top of the chair. Remember, it's got a loop down, so this needs to be as straight as possible. Here again, just pop it between the piping and the metal. It's a little bit awkward to get into. Pinch it shut. Shouldn't do any damage to the fabric. Along here, just pinch that. Just push it, don't bang it in. I haven't got the top in, I'm just going to pull the fabrics at the bottom out flat and level and push them carefully under the back of the chair. Here I'm going to just put a couple of staples. I'm not even going to push it up, I'm just going to fire it a little distance away so that they're easy to get out. And here again, just put three in. I don't want to be digging these out. And those are just to hold the bottom so there's a little bit of tautness on the fabric. So I'm going to work from the center to this side, pull both fabrics up, not too hard, just trim along the top. And I'm going to follow the piping, which isn't very clear. So if you want to, you can take it a little bit outside of that, work across all the way and trim it off later. So here we are, here's my first cut. And it looks a little bit generous because there's the piping with my needle. Pop the fabrics, both of them, round the metal. Use the back of your pin, roll the top of the pin like that and really stuff this fabric under the piping like that. With your hammer and a bit of fabric, not too much, you just tap it in just a little bit. You wrap some fabric up so you don't bruise the fabric you're knocking in and then you go to the next part. And if you have to cut down, you can. Because if you shape this, it will go in better. Again, kind of pulling it just a little bit up and out. And then with your needle, pop the fabric as smoothly as you can. So only do a couple of inches at a time. You get your hammer and your fabric and bang it into place. If there's any ripples, which there might be, you can often pull those out from another direction. I'm going to just go from here, which is the top of this. And again, I've had to pull the piping up. Just make sure everything's tucked in. And try to make it as smooth as you can. Dressmaking fabric goes in. It doesn't have the body that an upholstery fabric has, so you have to be a little bit more careful with it. Here again, I have to cut down and up. Just pop it in. It looks like I can trim that out a bit more. Be careful you don't cut the piping. <laughs> I have done that before and had to start all over again. And if you want to, because it's a little bit more of a cut, you can trim like you did. Just make sure that it all goes in. I'm not going to bang down this last part because I might have to alter that, but I will pull that out. I will tap that into place. Before I'm going to put this second side in, I've unhooked it and uh, readjusted and pulled it out a little bit further and up. And I'm just going to pop that back down to hold it for now and shut it and I know it's wrinkled but that's that will all go find the top and then cut all the way along using my fingers I can find the top of there pull both pieces of fabric just slightly out and up and start putting those in behind here and work my way across and it might not go in the first time ease it in I'm using my fingers to pull this up so I can pop that right in there if you uh, put it in wrong just put put your needle in and just ease the teeth back out and then you don't do too much damage. I'm just going to trim a little bit more up and then go to that corner. It's a little bit tight. Just remember to just make it a little bit taut and pull them both together. If you pull one you'll end up with ripples. Still needs a little bit more cutting. There we go. Working from the bottom of the chair up, pulling it out. I'm just going to cut up the outside of the chair leg. Here's the side of the chair and my fingers are just going to run where the piping is. Cut all the way up and out. If I cut it too close then if I need to make alterations I won't have enough fabric. As with the top, make sure these are bent down towards almost touching the piping. 
should have done that before I put the back on, but never mind. I'm going to start from the bottom and work up. Pull against the side of the chair here. You can see the fabric pulls out slightly. It takes most of the wrinkles out. Here, I can see that I'm a little bit too generous, but we'll see what goes in. Having snipped off an extra quarter of an inch, wrap this around. Only a little bit of tightness from the center out. Just remember that all the way up. I start at the bottom so that the natural shape of the chair will take some of the looseness of the fabric out. Just gonna tap it as I go up, not up to where I'm working. I leave a little bit of leeway. I've twisted this underneath the first one. And here again, I'm just gonna pull that out slightly, trim up a little bit more, about half an inch now. And it will alter as you go up. Pop it round those teeth and work your way to the top. Nothing to it. Nice and easy. You can hammer it down better when you've finished. So you, you want to be able to move them if you need to. It's a little bit awkward for me to put my fingers behind here so I can tend to bend the fabric over the side of the chair like that so I can see where it is. Nice and generous all the way up. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to run my fingers along the back end of the piping and I'm going to just trim back about a quarter of an inch for now not too far up, pull it this way and down just a little bit, both pieces of fabric, and slot them using the back end of my needle in here. Get to the bottom, I'm just gonna twist that right under so it catches. Push that in with my fingers just to hold it, and then work my way on up like I did on the other side, just pulling slightly this side. I can on this side pull, I just couldn't pull very much on the other. This metal work is better if there's a little bit of tension and I can put too much tension on the other side but I can on here. If I need to I can roll out the piping with the back end of that and tap this back in. Now there's a few wrinkles here but as I pull it it should pull those out. Don't pull it too tight there's got to be a little bit of give because you don't want somebody leaning into the back of the chair and then pulling all of this out. I've rolled the piping out with that holding it with my finger and popping that back in like that. Real easy. Just be careful with the metal. It uh, tends to rip your fingers up like nobody's business. As I've worked this part down and to here there's a wrinkle of fabric. Very gently using the sharp end of your needle pick it up and fold it into the metal and hopefully hook it onto the metal teeth. Sometimes that happens especially if you're using two fabrics. The fabric underneath will catch, sometimes the fabric on top won't. So you don't want wrinkles like that and actually I'm gonna have to pull this out. Dressmaking fabric is not the best for this job. Looks pretty and there it's gone away. So I'm gonna just pop those staples out that I didn't put in properly. Try not to bruise the fabric. This just bruises so easily. Try to get all of this out. I'm just going to cut a generous, about an inch away from the bottom, all the way across. And if you're not sure, just put your fingers at the base and cut two of your fingers. And the same going the other way. It's better to cut it too long than too short. If you cut it too short, then you've got problems. Start at the centre, and there should be really no argument as to where the center is. Fold the fabric about a quarter of an inch underneath like that, both pieces, and staple them underneath. So you're at least halfway across the bottom. Mind your fingers. Nobody's gonna see it, so if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. Here again, roll the fabric underneath, pull it slightly to the side as you go from the center out, and repeat all the way along. Just make sure it's smooth. When you get to the corner, just pull it up and snip from the outside edge to there. And usually I just lay my scissors where I want it to finish, like this. Not too tight in, just enough to have a bit of give. And here, just fold this fabric underneath and up and secure it. And hopefully any creases will come out. This is the piece of fabric from the piping. Fold that up and under. See if you can get it level with the outside back and secure into place. Make sure that the outside edge runs and fold that up and under too. Pop it up with your finger, if you can, just like that. Make sure that that comes and meets at the edge of the piping. As I did on the other side, I've cut that up to meet here. Then I'm just going to fold this up so that the bottom of here matches the bottom of there. Make sure everything's tipped up and out of the way. This has to be a sharp edge. Twist it up. This all has to be twisted underneath, as long as everything's secure and tight. 
make sure that's as close as you can all threads should be up and hidden and it doesn't matter if it's slightly out of line as long as it's as close as you can get it this is one that I saved it's not exactly straight they do match the tacks that are already on the chair having lined everything up put that in maybe a quarter of an inch from all sides these are a little bit awkward to get back in and after three or four goes it might go in be patient this is the worst part there's no way you want to bang your fingers that's for sure and there we go it should go in straight ish and that's the bottom in the corners are a little bit funky because you need to be able to fold them and they often don't go in very well and especially as i've got two pieces of fabric that i'm dealing with instead of the usual one i am going to roll the top of this fabric in behind here okay so that goes right in like that fold the fabric round like that and then pop it underneath this second side it's not going to be a brilliant top but it will hold like that and having pushed and smushed it in just tap it into play there's a little bit of a corner there that's showing I'm just going to pop this in the front and raise it there we go and then just pop that back down it should hide it there we go and then i can close up this too oh and here now this corner is slightly different because we started this at the top and then went down so we've got to fold it the other way and go across the top let me open this one up a little bit like this what we're going to do is we're going to fold this one round and underneath first like that trim off the top here then put like a 45 on like that and then fold that over the top and make sure everything's in and that should hold it I'll, I'll cut all the loose ends off in a minute and make sure that it looks nice and tidy it's not what i would say perfect mainly because it is dress weight it just frays and uh, doesn't have the body that an upholstery weight would have but it will look good thank you for joining me today I hope I've been imparted some useful information about using dress weight fabrics. Uh, just remember that you can treat it almost like an upholstery weight, but just be careful that you need to line it sometimes. Do not use it for a seat. You can use it on, a, on the back of a chair that's going to be used occasionally. It would last a long time. And as I say, there's eight chairs, so it should look really good in her dining room. If you liked the video, give me a couple of thumbs up. Take care. See you later. Ciao.